I'm not going to be indebted to any big um, donors. Uh, shall we say special vested interests. special yeah. special interest groups, and that in there, I because of that fact I can see myself as being able to be very flexible and and mm. and do what I want as president as a candidate because I will not be restricted by having to pay debts later mm. on political debts yes or even financial debts yes. for that matter yes how much do you reckon you're going to have to spend. Realistically. Well, realistically, I would like to spend the limit. I don't know what the limit for president is. Two hundred million for ads, mm -hmm. and um, we are going to work on a very lean and mean. Um, mm. uh, I'm not going to really fund every every Tom Dick and the yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to fund anyone else. Yes, yes. What gives you so much faith that you can win this election? I mean. Again, maybe I'm cynical, yes. but I'm looking at it from the outside. Mm -hmm. You need an organization. I'm not even talking about buying off mayors or BEIs. I'm just talking about people to get out there and, and, and campaign for you. We have volunteers. There are a lot of NGOs, a lot of environmental organizations who will help me. Mm. And a lot of people who have expressed their desire to, to help me. And we are in the process of doing some ground organizing, which is completely different from just... Um, depending on local government organizing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the local official will always look for, out for himself first before the... You know, it's funny. I've, I lost in 2001 because I didn't use TV. Mm -hmm. And so nobody said a thing. And then I win in 2004, and all these people who I never knew, local officials, they come to me and say, Mom, we helped you. Right. But you really can't quantify that help. Yeah. You know, if someone says, Mom, we'll help you, we'll make you win your number one here, there's really no way. In the grand there's scheme no of things... There's no way you can, you, can, they, you can be sure that they actually did it. No, there's yeah. no checking. And in the grand scheme of things, winning a national election is really a matter of, uh, in the presidential level, communicating your vision and having enough people believe in it to vote for you, regardless of party affiliation. So what would you do in your first 100 days? Um, I would have a major one audit of all government uh, agencies, and, and I would say that each of my cabinet um, secretaries, I would fire on site if they colluded with any congressman or senator to get a kickback in what they call insertions. You know, mm. that's what I, yeah. I, I really filed against the Ethics Committee against Villar, to look at all the insertions, because I believe... With, the, with all the insertions in the national budget, we can trim down 20% of the national budget, which just goes back to politicians' pockets. Mm -hmm. And that's big. And that money can be used for something else. That's already part of trimming the corruption in mm -hmm. the, um, just in the budget itself. Yeah. So you'll go after corruption. That's going to be your number well, one Well, corruption and, and plug those loopholes. That's just one, two closure not only of the Marcos wealth, but of all the other plunder cases. Um, there hasn't been closure on the Marcos wealth. There hasn't been closure on the other scams that have preceded it. Mm. We need closure because as a country, we need to be able to say, yes, there is justice. Even for the, the big fish also goes to jail. Um, it was very painful for me, and I even wrote President Estrada a letter asking him not to accept the pardon. That was a travesty of justice. You know, to accept the pardon to me was when I never had fought with President Estrada, mm. but that is when I really kept my distance. I could not accept him uh, accepting a pardon. And, because? Um, I thought he stood for something, and he was really fighting the corruption and fighting the people who kicked him out. But once you accept the pardon... It's just like horse trading so all you th over you again. So you think he's doing, you, you don't think that he's, um, you think there was some kind of deal there? You know, it's between him, but deal or no deal, <laughs> <laughs> deal or no deal, there was no principle, uh, there was no principled stand. Behind that. Behind that, the uh, accepting mm. uh, pardon. What about 
the poor. I mean, you, 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 you call yourself a progressive, and you certainly voted that way. Um, well, Jipepa. You, you go after corruption. Uh, you, you close unresolved issues. Uh, I think that that's something that needs to be done, but that's not going to put food on the table. What will put food on the table is one, get the SSS contributions that the poor remit to their employers. Um, there are about 130,000 companies who get the SSS contributions of the poor people and they don't remit it. So that's stealing. Mm. Put those companies in jail. Two, I voted against Jipepa because it is anti-poor. It will not allow our farmers and um, it will bring too much competition for our farmers and our fishermen. And three, um, the, the contractualization. There's a problem mm -hmm. too. Um, people are working for 20 years and they're still contractual. So what happens is that wage over price, in economics terms, W over P, the real wage, gets smaller as... Um, Inflation increases, and, as these, the value, yeah. and, and then as these little things are being removed. So I'd like to put that back in the pocket of the poor. And I believe in leveling the playing field, giving investment directly to the poor and the middle class, not, for, not giving incentives and big breaks to the big monopolies. Mm. From 1998 to 2008, the poverty level, meaning the gap between the rich and the poor, has increased such that the income of the top 20 family and corporations, families and corporations in the Philippines is equal to the income of 10 million families. Mm. The poverty level has not been this big because of glorious, complete free trade, um, non-protective, non-sovereign, anti-sovereignty. Um, economic policy. Globalization, in other words. A globalization is great if you're a global power. Mm. But we look at India, look at China. They didn't care what other countries did. They stuck to their policies until they were strong enough to fight in the global world. They were closed economies. I call the Philippines the fashion victims <laughs> of economic policy. Mm. Uso, when it was the World Bank, World Bank. Yeah when all the IPPs, IPPs. So what we do, we just give money to vested interests and open these um, doors of opportunity for big business and not give um, social and economic safety nets to the poor who are really at the receiving end of this very skewed, globalized, free trading um, economic policy that I'm extremely against. Senator, we've got a minute left. Uh, what do you want our viewers who are watching now to take away from this discussion that you and I are having? To know that I'm sincere and I'm doing this not out of ambition but out of conscience and I've always voted out of conviction and never out of convenience. And in the Senate and politics, you know what convenience means. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Senator, and I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you in the coming Thank weeks. You, and I look forward to your participation in some of the debates that are scheduled in the coming months. Thank you, Ricky.